Howdy, howdy, Chris here. Welcome back to Garage Noise. Today's episode, I'm gonna share with you how to blend your clear coat. So if you have a small scratch or damage on your bumper cover like this, I'm gonna share with you how to repair that and how we can paint just this area and blend this bumper cover so you don't have to paint your entire bumper cover. Even though you will need some tools to do this repair, this can easily be done at home. Here's the damage we have on this Jeep that we wanna repair. This thing we wanna do is I'm gonna mask off this trim area. We're gonna mask off this light and this light. We're gonna start preparing this because we may need a little bit of filler in it. So what I'll start doing is sanding this with 180 grit sandpaper. That's a coarse enough grit sandpaper to sand out some of these scratches. And then we'll see what we have as far as how deep it is in the plastic and what we can do to fill it. I'm just gonna run a little bit of inch and a half tape here just to protect these lights. Okay, so I've got a little bit of 180 grit sandpaper. This is the 3M Cubitron sandpaper. I really like this sandpaper. It's reasonably priced and it does a really good job and lasts a long time. I've got just this flexible block here that I created. I'm just gonna use this corner here because we don't need this entire block and we're just gonna sand this out. What we'll be able to do is just smooth out all the surface scratches that are in the paint and we'll be left with the gouges that are in the plastic. And then we can evaluate that and see what we need to do to fill those. Now, some of these fine scratches down here, we're gonna knock those out with some 320 grit sandpaper. Those are in the paint itself and those should sand out easily by hand. Okay, that looks like it's sanded pretty well. Let's just take, we're just gonna take some isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna spray it down. We'll just wipe it clean so we can get a good look at these scratches and what's left. This bumper, this bumper has been painted before. You can see some of the imperfections in the paint. We're also doing some other work to this vehicle. We're painting this fender and the hood, but for this video, we're just gonna share with you how to repair this and how to blend this bumper cover. So. We're looking at these scratches. You can see there's a deep gouge right here. It's not too bad, too deep. A, a little bit of polyester glazing putty is gonna fill that nicely. We've got another little scratch there. And I'll fill these gouges with some polyester glazing putty called icing. Now I wanna take this 180 and I wanna make sure I get inside that groove of this scratch. So I'm gonna sand right in there. This is the product we're using. It's the USC icing. It's a finishing putty, so it's great for some fine scratches, some little waves and body work. If you have to fill pinholes, I'm just using a small spreader here. We're just gonna fold this in till it's all one uniform color. Just gonna get a little bit on here, just like that. Lay it in those scratches. And I'm gonna cover the whole surface area Very thin coat. There's a little bit extra on there, that's okay. Cause we're just gonna sand it out. This can be applied over a 180 grit scratch. Now we'll just block that. I'll probably block it with the 320 cause that's coarse enough. It'll sand it pretty easy. It's a small area. And we want to refine those scratches from 180 to 320 to 600 before we paint. Before we do the 600, we'll sand it down to 320 and then we'll apply a little bit of primer over this. So this is cure now. I just cut down a motor guard block and I've got a piece of Velcro on it for this hook and loop. This is handy for just small, tight areas. So we're just gonna block this. We're moving with the contours and we're just blocking around this corner until it's nice and level. Okay, so we got the majority of this blocked out. I'm just going to, for this edge, I'm just rolling it over the edge here. So I'm just folding this piece of paper so it conforms to this edge and we're just sanding around it, okay? It's a 320. Put it on my little block again. 
I'm just going to remove those 180 or scratches. So you always want to be refining your scratches down to a 320 before you prime and then a 600 before you paint. Isopropyl alcohol. We're going to mask this off just a little bit better for primer. I'll start with the lights. Because we're right here, I repaired these scratches as well. We'll primer these as well. And we'll put some 2K urethane primer over this. So I went ahead and I scuffed this area here with 600 grit foam pad. We scuffed here and down here. This is where we're preparing for the blend of the clear coat and paint. Now right here on this edge is where we're gonna break off the clear coat. We're gonna do a soft edge right on this contour here, this body line. And then right here we're gonna blend the clear coat and we'll blend the clear coat right here as well. There's kind of like an edge here. So that's where we'll blend the clear coat. Now we're blending the color out here. This is where we'll stop the color. All I did was mask off these lights. We don't wanna get any primer in this crease here. We're just gonna primer this little bit, this little bit here, and then we'll primer this section here. Uh, I'm, gonna put a, I'm gonna loop a piece of paper here so we don't get any overspray into our blend area. We're ready to put some primer on this bumper. I've got the primer mixed up. Now this primer is a fast drying primer made by Sher Sherman Williams. It's quite expensive, um, but you can use any 2K primer. Uh, another primer that I use is U-Pole 2K primer. It's a really versatile primer, really good. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to dry. So this is drying quickly and that's why we're using it today. This primer mixes up four to one to one. We're gonna put two coats on. We are using the low volume, low pressure paint gun, the R500. Our fluid volume, I'm just gonna turn to uh, one and a half turns out from close. So we'll close it all the way. And then we'll turn it one and a half turns out. Fan pattern, I'm gonna narrow it down so I can be real precise with where I put the primer here. Now over here, I'll probably open it up a little bit, cover more surface area. And as far as air pressure, we're gonna have it at about 10 to 12 PSI. I'm not pulling the trigger all the way, we're just gonna get it coated. This particular primer, you wanna put on two wet coats right after one another. You don't wanna let it flash off. Most primers you want to let it flash off for 10 to 15 minutes. Really easy, low overspray. We're just going to sand this with some 320. We don't want to go through the primer. We just want to smooth it out. This I'm going to just do by hand, like the edges here. All this light primer dust out here, we'll sand that with a uh, 600 grit sponge. A 600 grit sponge. I'm going to go out here just a little bit farther. I'm going to remove that overspray a little bit. We don't want to have to put color out very far. If you want to see how something is gonna look like when you clear it, all you gotta do is spray it with some isopropyl alcohol. And then you can see what it looks like wet. So we can see that our scratches and gouges are gone. We do have a little overspray right there we wanna sand out. When you're blending your clear, you wanna use the body lines to your advantage. So we have a body line here, running down here, no body line here. Now right here, we have a little bit of a body line right in this bumper cover. So we're gonna use these body lines to hide our blend. At the peak of this body line, that's where we want a soft edge of clear. Now remember, we're not, we don't have any color out to this point, just clear. Our color is gonna end here. We need to sand this edge. So for that, we're gonna use a gray scuff pad. Now this is about uh, 800 to 1,000 or 1,500 grit scratch. And we just wanna run it just over this edge. So we have scratches on the other side of our blend. So when we have the soft edge of blend here, we can come in and polish this out lightly and that clear is still gonna adhere on the other side of this peak, okay? So we're gonna go around these edges right here, just 
just slightly, we want some good adhesion for our clear coat. Now right here, we're gonna have to blend this in this open area. You wanna hide your blend as much as possible. We're gonna sand right on this peak of this body line here. Then what we'll do is we're gonna take some foam tape. I'm gonna mask this off first, not to the peak, to the edge of it, and then I'll come along and I'll put this foam tape. This has an adhesive on it, and I'm just gonna lay it just before this peak. So now when we clear up to that foam tape, that's going to leave a soft edge right here. We can easily come and just polish that out. Now here we're going to have an open area. So what we want to do there is we want to take our scuff pad and we want to go beyond our blend area. So probably about three inches beyond. So when we have our blend of our clear here, the, a light amount of overspray is going to go into a sanded area for good adhesion. Now we're going to loop a piece of paper here so we'll have a minimal amount of overspray of clear land on this sanded area and then we can come back and polish that out. Let's tape this up and I'll show you how we do it. Okay, so we have the bumper all masked off. You can see here where our blend's gonna be on that body line and then on the bottom body line. So what we're gonna do is apply our paint right here. I'm gonna apply it in this direction, okay, away from the area that we're gonna be blending the paint and clear coat. Cover the primer first. We'll do a little blend out into here and then we'll clear coat it. Now I'm gonna use the Segola Mini Extreme. It's a touch-up gun. Very good gun. You don't have to use a touch-up gun. You can use a full-size gun, but you are going to want to dial your fan pattern back a little bit because this is such a small area. And this one, I'll probably use it wide open. My air pressure, I'm going to keep relatively low at probably about 12 to 15 PSI. And then my fluid volume, two turns out from closed on my fluid volume. That's our first coat of paint. We blended it right there at the top. We've got our little blend right there. And then I had a little spot here I had to cover, so I blended out into that. So that's our first coat. We'll let it sit and flash off. Okay, we're ready for our second coat. I'm just gonna tack rag this off lightly. It's been about 15 minutes. Okay, so there's what we got. I'm gonna let this flash off. And I'll probably apply one more coat and then I'll share with you what clear we're using and how we clear coat this. Okay, so we're gonna apply one more coat of base. I'm gonna do a little bit of a drop coat. So what I do when I do a drop coat is I just move away from the panel a little bit. It's gonna be just a light coat over the blend area. Okay, we're ready to mix up some clear. We're gonna use the Finish One FC710 and then the Medium Hardener. Now this clear coat mixes up four to one. That's four parts of the clear coat, one part of the hardener. This is made by Sherman Williams. It's a really good quality clear that's reasonably priced. I think this kit's just a little bit over $100 and that's for a gallon. Um, we'll be using the Segola Cup. 
system, disposable cup system. This is a series one. This comes with like 40 or 50 liners. It comes with the uh, measuring cup and then the lids. And of course they have a micron filter in there and then the locking collar. Good system. And then we went ahead and cleaned out our gun. We removed the silver paint and we're ready to spray with the Segola Mini Extreme. So let's go ahead and mix up some clear. We're not gonna need a whole lot of clear, so I'm just gonna go uh, find the four to one mixing ratio on here. Four to one to one mixing ratio. Now in the four column, we're gonna go to one part of clear, and then in the one column, we'll, go to the, we'll fill it up to the one, and that'll be a correct mixing ratio. So, just pour it in. I'm trying to do this with one hand. There we go. Activator. That's it. We'll stir this up. This is gonna go really quickly spraying this. So after we spray our two coats of clear, we'll put one on first. We'll let it flash off for 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll spray our second coat on. And immediately after we spray our second coat, we're gonna wash it in and I'll show you what we're gonna wash it in with and what it's gonna do. So you pull number nine. It's an aerosol ending agent. What it's gonna do, it's gonna help melt in the new clear coat with the old clear coat. This is the U-Pole number nine. This is the fade out reducer. This is for the clear coat blend. So what we'll do is when we blend this area right here, I'll probably pull that paper back. So after we clear this, right here's where our, our clear coat blend is gonna be. I'll pull this paper back and I'll just spray this on immediately after we clear coat our second coat. Okay, so I bumped up my air pressure to about 20 PSI, and then on the fluid volume, I'm running it at three turns out from close. We'll see how that does. I want a medium wet coat. Now when I come over here, I'm stopping right about there because on my second coat's one I'm gonna put go out to the edge. Okay, there's the first coat. Looks good. Nice and clean. You can see how there's a little dry spray right there where we're gonna blend it. Let that flash off for about 10 minutes and we'll apply our second coat. So we just got a little bit of this. You can see. Okay, so here this bumper is all finished up. The repair came out beautifully. Scratches are gone. I had a little bit of a sag right here, so I put this Viver heat lamp on it, and uh, that seemed to firm it up a little bit. We'll just cut and buff that if we need to. And then over here is the blend. So if you look in the light, you can see where it's just a little dry right there. Just a little dry. So what we'll, all we'll have to do is a little bit of rubbing compound and polish that away from the blend, and then this will be undetectable. Now I did spray a little bit of that U-Pole number nine right there. We had a little bit of a reducer run right here, but it dried up and that'll buff out nicely. And that's how you can do a repair at home. If you appreciate this kind of content and wanna learn more, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you on the next episode of Garage Noise.